One aspect of being a police officer is that your life is always in danger, especially for those who work in the tactical response teams and gang units. Now, every day, these men and women fight fire with fire in efforts to keep our societies safe. Now, lately, we've seen on the news where suspects allegedly refusing to surrender and engaging in shootouts with the cops. There was an incident in Marion Hill where nine suspects were shot and put to sleep by the police. Now, there was also a famous case involving a notorious businessman from Richards Bay who was shot and put to sleep by the cops after a shootout at his house. Now, on the flip side, people claim that some police officers are not there to actually arrest, but they are there to kill, essentially operating like a hit squad. Now, situations arise where certain suspects become enemies with the police, even making threats and the police take these threats seriously. Now this result in I will get you before you get me type of situation. Now in this episode, we'll explore the infamous life of Ngulu Legumkize, who died at the young age of 31 at the hands of the police. Now this is a chilling tale of greed, political manipulation and murder that unfolded, leaving a trail of unanswered questions and shattered lives. Ngulego was born in Richards Bay. He didn't finish school, but at an early age, he worked as a petrol attendant. Now, from that early age, it is said that he was a guy who had a vision for his life and was determined to achieve it regardless. Now, it's reported that later on, he became involved in the taxi business and expanded into other ventures, including construction. It's known that he was also conducting business with Transnet through the government tender systems. And one notable aspect of Nkulu Lego was that he was making a lot of cash at a young age and was respected even by those older than him. Nkulu Lego gained public attention and fame through a game called Indishi, meaning the dish, which typically occurs during weddings, bridal showers, birthday parties, and similar events. Now, in this traditional game, people typically put money in a dish as gifts for the married couple or the bride-to-be. However, it has evolved into a competition where big spenders showcase their generosity by giving the most money. Now, individuals contribute amounts ranging from 5,000 rands to 20,000 rands cash and sometimes even more. Now, the audience counts the contributions as the person is giving the money and by the end of the event, the total collection can reach up to more than a million if they are particularly big spenders who've attended the event. Now, Nkulego made headlines by giving away 1.5 million rands cash at a bridal shower solely to flaunt his wealth and demonstrate that he's a real big shot. He owned two luxurious properties in Zimbali Estate and Palito Estate. In KZN, the tender system operates like a mafia-like syndicate where politicians, government officials, and shady business people bribe, threaten, and if necessary, put people to sleep to ensure that tenders flow a certain way. You know, this phenomenon occurs throughout the country and these people are known as the tender mafia. Now, when it comes to Gullego, there's also a controversial side to him. He was allegedly involved in some of these irregular tenders with Transnet, among other things. Now, there are also recordings of him extorting and threatening people. And according to Word on the Streets, he was one of the city's short callers and allegedly involved in moving weight. The recordings of Ngulle sending someone a voice note letting them know that every delivery vehicle or motorbike on the road in Richards Bay must pay 100 rands to him a month. Now this includes Mr. D, Uber Eats and Take A Lot. Now if you consider the fact that there are thousands of delivery bikes on the road and Take A Lot delivery vans and cars, <laughs> that money can go up to thousands. 
Kunjano for my song. A turn dot in a tongue seven to number a color, Moba, you know, numbering it to lead. The long little sell a message. Kuba for no end sevens and abonnonk. Ugooty a young into life, Mr. D. Opa eat. Take a lot, young Leon Dolly. Can you nanny? Molly's bill. Young Leon Dolly, so a manch. Jalo McPillin Yang. A is two two to nest two two to nomi monto and a monto. Give no hundred strand cure. So a manch. A Unsy's egg. Ung don't tell you when I went to bag, sing a bang, looking go shy. A Uma corner, Oti Funungas Unchel. So figure lap. Monko Leguagam kiss. So figure me lap. A no more men in a bayam, Unchel. So nagging a bayam. Well, let's be. Exane. Young Kimont, song is too too. The other hand of Shandik son. The love of Tung says a gong to the city buffoon. Laban Sevens and Abogon Wonk. Gooding Sean Jalo. The speculations that he could have been involved in moving weight because there was an incident that he was allegedly involved in where five people got shot and put to sleep. What happened was unknown gunmen were riding in a polo, drove by a parking lot close to a car wash and opened fire outside the supermarket, putting to sleep four people on the spot while a fifth person succumbed to their injuries on the way to the hospital. Well, Zulu Natal police are searching for at least five suspects who this morning shot dead five people in Richards Bay. Witnesses say four people got out of a car and shot at the victims in the parking lot of a local shopping center. The motive for the fatal incident is still unknown at this stage and police are appealing for assistance from the public. I'm now joined uh, on the line by KZN police spokesperson Robert uh, Nechiwunda. Thank you very much uh, uh, for joining us uh, sir, here on All Angles. Just first of all, what is the information that police have at their disposal? What we have for now is that um, for at least five suspects rather who were um, um, traveling in a, a blue VW Polo mm. and just got out of the vehicle. Four of them uh, out of the vehicle and opened fire at five people and then got back into the vehicle and fled from the scene of crime. Four victims were certified dead at the scene of crime. And uh, one person was um, um, certified dead on arrival at the local clinic. Mm. Uh, do you know at all if uh, the victims were traveling together? Because clearly the assailants were traveling together. Were the victims together at the time of the shooting? It, it, it could suggest that they, they were together because they were at a, at a parking lot, although they were not inside their vehicle. Yeah. Uh, there were bodies who were not were not very far from from each other, which could suggest that maybe they were they, they were trying to, to run away from the assailants. Uh, but it looked like they were together when they were ambushed. Mm. Police said a drug war could not be ruled out as a motive for the hit. Now, some people who spoke to the press said that some of the people who were put to sleep worked at a car wash, and there were suspicions that they were moving weight as well. Now, the source added that the motive could have been a territorial war between drug lords who were fighting for territory and customers. Now, the suspects fled the scene of the crime in a blue VW Polo. There were reports and rumors that Nkulego could have been involved in the alleged theft war shooting. Now, what happened next was that the following day, the police went looking for Ngululego, following the trail of the people who were shot and taken out in Richards Bay in that parking lot. Now, the teams were split in two and one raided the Zimbali estate. As they entered the house and when they approached the bedroom, Ngululego and his accomplice allegedly started shooting at the police, refusing to surrender. Now, the police retaliated and took them out. 
now three 9mm pistols, a revolver, two shotguns and a thousand different bullets were found on the scene. Now after this happened, it was all over the news. His funeral was attended by influential people in KZN. Now people close to Ngulego feel like the police didn't want to give Ngulego a chance to plead his case in court, but they decided his fate that he should go. Now Ngulego's life and his money has sparked curiosity and the exact nature of his business dealings and the source of his wealth remains a matter of speculation. <laughs> 